Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to be the last one. Uh, and I'm going to show some complications, which actually are not common, and that's going to be one of the main points. Uh, next. So I'm not I just want to briefly say about our protocol, because that's uh, uh, been already described by the other speakers. But we do Barbot test, and I'll show a case where it was, uh, it, was uh, it, it gave some information. Um, we do ultrasound guided access. And uh, the important thing about the medical cocktail, especially for the spasm cases that I will show, um, these are more or less the problems that we encountered in our experience. It's been more, almost like two years, and uh, I'll go through them. So, spasm. We, we saw some cases already of spasm. Let me show you the worst cases of spasm that we had. Uh, the important thing is obviously prevention with medications. Um, sedation or anesthesia obviously help. Now, how do we notice when there's spasm? Three ways. Images, obviously, if we see that. Clinical, the patient may have pain, severe pain while we do the, um, the, the case. Or tactile, we may feel that the catheter doesn't go forward. We cannot, it's not very mobile. So that is an indication that there may be spasm. What to do? Inject more vasodilator, pull very slowly, and wait. And there's other techniques, like we can inflate the cuff to create some ischemia that can cause uh, dilation. Um, or we can inject nitroglycerin, like on site, like through, uh, like transcutaneous. So, important thing though, be patient. Don't pull hard, okay? Because that's, that's where the issues, that's what we know from the cardiologist, that the issues can come. Um, so this is a case, actually it was at the, earlier of, at the beginning of our experience with radial. I mean, uh, we start the case, you normal, not, not particular issues, we start the angiogram. And then, at a certain point, we lost the pulse ox reading. Obviously, we put the pulse ox in the thumb if we go radial, uh, because so we can, we can have a, a live, uh, um, continuous uh, demonstration of how the flow is there. We lost the pulse ox reading while we were doing the angiogram. So what to do? Like we pull back the catheter, and actually we were able like, to pull it all, all out, even though it was a little harder, but not too much. And that's what we encountered, like severe spasm. Okay, and in these situations, like, we decide just to go femoral and, uh, and finish the case femoral. And then at the end, just by adding some more verapamil, this, this was resolved. Um, now, this is another case, and, uh, like, we start radial. You see, like, no issues at the beginning. We like to look at the arteries uh, on the way. Um, we like to know. Um, at a certain point, the catheter got completely locked in place. We could neither, neither pull nor push. Um, so, um, so what to do? And that's where the other technique that I told you like, can come in place. So we added more verapamil. The patient was intubated in this case. We added more verapamil, nothing. We inflated the cuff to create local ischemia, nothing, nothing worked. It was a good half an hour or so, 45 minutes. We, could, we couldn't pull or push the um, the, um, um, the uh, catheter. So what did we do? We do the local ultrasound. We localized the area with, uh, um, uh, with the spasm. We injected nitroglycerin, and then at that point we could pull. And that's what we found, like severe spasm, but where? Actually like along the brachial artery. And that's one of the points. It's, the spasm may not be only in the radial, it can be in the brachial artery. And, uh, and that's maybe why, like when we inject the when we inject the cocktail at the beginning, it may not reach actually the cocktail, the brachial artery, and that's why that, that is a location that may cause, uh, that may uh, suffer spasm. Um, and then we delayed, like everything, everything went back to normal essentially. So no, obviously, no, no permanent morbidity, morbidity, but still like a significant obstacle during the case. This is a case uh, uh, of severe spasm that caused temporary ischemia. This was a severely sick patient post multiple, two transplant, liver and kidney. So both groins were busy with other lines. And uh, so it really, this was a good radial case, but like very small radial artery, it's extremely small. And I did a reverse barbeau. So the barbeau, the Allen test, but like reverse, like checking like on the other side, it didn't pass. Any, anyhow, given the risk of like going through those groins, I decided to go ulnar anyway in this case. And I start the case, and here you see on this, uh, 
on these images, you see how really like the radial artery was very small. Indeed, we go ulnar here. We start the case, like, and after a few minutes, the hands started becoming cold, and the pul we lost the pulse ox reading. And um, so then I started becoming very nervous, and then I did an angiogram through the hand, and that's what I see. Essentially, there's no feeling of the of the ulnar side of the of the of the uh, hand. Obviously, in this case, you want to put the pulse oximeter on the ulnar side and not on the thumb. Um, so what to do? I, um, I access the groin, even though like it was a very bad groin to access. I go up, I check, and I check the wrist from above. And what you see here uh, is uh, an image in which, like, essentially, we close the we close the wrist. So you you see the the uh, the, the band here, the the TR band. Okay, and then now you see how there is an anti-grade filling because I deflated it a little, and there you see you see the extravasation here because I deflated it more to have anti-grade flow through it. But you see here there's a, there is spasm in this in this segment, and this spasm was enough in this particular patient with this particular anatomy to cause focal ischemia. Um, patient pulse oximeter came back. Patient got the, the the hand got better in a few minutes. Again, no no permanent morbidity. This is. Uh, this is another example just to show that this spasm may actually extend from the, uh, from the, um, from the uh, ulnar to the, um, to the uh, radial. And uh, here you see that uh, in this case, at the, end of, at the end of the procedure, that's the catheter tip, we inject from there, and we see there's no feeling of either. Okay, why? Because the vasospasm can extend from one artery to the other. Uh, and there, I, I shoot the, the higher up just to show that there was no spasm of the brachial in this particular patient. So, um, going on to the next problem, the radial loop. We saw a few cases, what to do with radial loop. Uh, the concept, the important thing is to recognize it, and, like, and again, like importance of the images, okay, and, uh, and understand that there are ways to overcome it. It's actually not a reason to switch to femoral, it's okay? We just have to overcome it in some ways. And uh, this is a, an example of a patient, uh, ruptured aneurysm, like we go through, like lateral projection may be useful because you can really see like the loop better, okay? And then you have to uh, advance it. And in this way, in this case, I use a microcatheter. I like, I, I, that's my favorite uh, technique for this. So we just go through with the microcatheter. And then once the microcatheter is up, then you support enough to go with the, to go with the catheter. Certainly a J-tip wire also is a, is a good option, but I found it in some, in some cases, I found it hard to push through. Um, and uh, this is uh, just a, 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 in, a, in a case in which we overcome it with the catheter, okay, but still like the loop is still there. So what to do, we just pull the catheter once you're very uh, far out with your, with your devices to uh, unloop the, um, the vessel. Uh, now, the patient comes back for treatment, what to do? I mean, if, it's, if, it's a, if it was an issue to go through past the radial loop, you can also go ulnar, and that's one point that we, we can also think of that as, as an option. Uh, high origin. High origin may be a problem because usually when it's high origin, it's vastly tortuous and it's small. So um, in this case, uh, this was a, a case of a high origin. We go through and this is like the origin, like essentially we're here at the axilla and this is the origin of the radial artery. Uh, we aborted because this patient was really like, we needed a bigger support. It was a pipeline case. So we aborted the case. Uh, uh, we aborted the radial approach and we went groin. Um, now, Six months follow-up, come back, we go ulnar, and we do the, the, the angiogram ulnar in this case, and, and no issues. Um, this is another example of a high radial, uh, high origin in which like, there is a severe spasm, really like at the, at the radial artery, uh, at, the, at, the, at its high origin, and uh, this, is, uh, this is like uh, something that really, like, if you know about it, uh, you, can, you, can, you can avoid, but most of the time it can be o overcome. Uh, in this case, there was a high origin and a radial loop, um, so um, meaning that there was like a connection here. So you have to choose which route to go here, like overcome this radial loop or go straight to here. I decided to go straight and then, believe it or not, had severe spasm, I had, like I had to like pull back and, uh, and, and then I, I, went through, I went through that radial loop. Oh, well, the video works, good. Um, so. Um, uh, this was just a video that shows like how to go with the microcatheter. You go there, like you like once it uh, once it, it's J's, uh, and then it becomes becomes very easy at that point. You just like bring the microcatheter up, and then bringing the, your bigger catheter over, it's it becomes very easy, like no problems. 
Okay, aberrant subclavian. Um, this is the only case really, really that we had. It's a case that we knew it was an aberrant subclavian, okay? But the problem was in the posterior circulation, so we knew that it was enough to shoot the vert. So we go there, we shoot the vert, we answer the clinical question, okay? And then we said, okay, let's try to do the rest of the angiogram, and we were able, actually. Uh, but it's really like, it's, it's not straightforward. So if you know about it, you check on your images before, like it it's makes sense probably to avoid your uh, radial axis. Uh, FMD, it's not really a problem, it's just an observation, like, and it's, it's, it's something that uh, we didn't know before, but FMD can also involve the, the brachial arteries, and uh, this is a patient, it's not, it's okay, it, going through it, it's not an issue, it's just something that it, it also remarks how important it is to get images on your way. And this is a patient that also had the FMD also in the other vessel, ICAs and vertebral arteries. Perforation. Um, uh, we had the, uh, one case that I'm showing you here. Um, this is a patient that was or already was angled before, um, had a lot of pain, some spasm. It's a young woman, classical um, patients that can suffer from spasm. Um, and, uh, and we did the first angel, and this is like with the second angel, it was a patient that required obviously multiple accesses uh, for uh, multiple aneurysm treatment. And the, the post the second case, this is the image, like, I mean, the, the artery is preserved, not particular problems. At the time of, at the start of the third case, and these were like, diff like a few, a few uh, months apart, uh, like the, on the first roadmap, you see that there's a immediate visualization of a vein there. Which, which doesn't, it should not be there. So like by looking more at the images, now we recognize that indeed there's, there's something, there's a perforation probably like through and through and went also in, into the vein causing a temporary fistula. I got uh, a little nervous, so I access, uh, uh, I, I pulled back, I accessed the groin, and there was continuous extravasation in the arm. So here obviously like we want to avoid the, to avoid a, um, uh, an issue with, uh, uh, because it, there can be a compartment syndrome from something like that, so uh, I, um, uh, I put like a few TR bands, one on, on, on the side of each other, and, uh, and then at checking from above, we made sure that there was flow, and you know, nothing really, everything was, n nothing happened in this patient at the end, but you know, for, for a few minutes uh, I was very nervous, but again, like, there's no like, when we discuss also among ourselves with the other people, like there's really like, we don't, nobody really experienced a severe, a severe uh, complication for, related to, uh, to uh, perforation. Um, this is the worst complication that I had uh, with the radial experience. And uh, this is a patient that came for a uh, pipeline treatment for an aneurysm. Okay, and at that time we had the Infinity 090 available. It's not available anymore. Um, we access the the um, the radial. We go with the Simmons. Everything is smooth. We go up, and now we're trying to, we're trying to catheterize the carotid artery. And then at a certain point, I felt resistance to advance the the Infinity. And uh, instinctively, uh, I slightly pulled it to see like if it was mobile. And and uh, um, and then I lost control. I could not push, I could not pull. And then I, I checked. I checked the catheter all the way. And uh, that's what I found. The catheter essentially unraveled at the point of the arteriotomy. So here, I just put a, a needle there just to point on this extra, where was the arteriotomy? The arteriotomy is here, and now the sheath is unraveled through and through from inside all the way out, okay? And, uh, and this was a big problem. Now, what to do? Obviously, you can, if you just keep pulling, you will just keep unraveling it no, with no uh, good result. Uh, so um, I tried something like I push a balloon inside, trying to inflate this balloon, a non-compliant balloon, and trying to pull from, from the inside. Uh, it pulled it just a little, but not enough. So um, what, uh, what we ended up doing, we had to extend like the arteriotomy. So we had to like cut, cut the vessel. And uh, for, a, for a couple of millimeters, uh, for like this, this, this like around like five millimeters or so, uh, this distance. And, uh, and then we could pull it out. And, um, and this is a control from uh, a few uh, weeks later. Um, but essentially, like we had to lengthen the arteriotomy. We had a, a large blood loss of like approximately one liter because by during, like, during the, the arteriotomy and removing the 
and trying to remove the sheet, there was really like no way to control that, uh, that flow. Um, and the uh, patient woke up well, but developed a pseudo aneurysm. And here you can see the pseudo aneurysm in the control. Okay, now this uh, uh, pseudo aneurysm was treated with uh, uh, ultrasound guided compression. So here you're seeing it after the treatment. Uh, so no really issues, like the patient is doing well, like no, uh, no, no permanent uh, issues from this. But this was the worst uh, case, worst complication I had in this, uh, in this uh, uh, almost two years experience. Um, kinking, I never had it, but uh, uh, I, I want to cite this uh, paper about the complications and challenges. Uh, Obviously, like that would be, can be very bad if it happens. Um, and the, the point is, like, not don't twist the simons without the wire, uh, um, uh, uh, without the wire inside too much, especially if, if using the glide cut, which is a little, a little more prone to these sort of kinkings. Um, so this is just an overview of uh, of the of the problems that we had. And one of the points about this talk about complications is really like that. Yes, we had issues, but. Like the issues were, at the end, like I, I show you the worst issue that I had. Like at the same time though, like uh, my, most of my partners go transfemoral, like I can cite you at least three or four uh, femoral, like uh, ish, big issues, like patients that uh, had a big uh, major morbidity or, or, or even mortality from it. Um, so these are again, are the, the, the amount of, of, of issues that we had. We never had a lost hand, luckily. Um, and, uh, but in the meantime, like we had a few cases that require switch to transfemoral. Yes, we had a few, uh, but in the same time period, we also had uh, uh, cases requiring switch from radial to uh, uh, from uh, radial uh, femoral to radial. Sorry. Um, again, just to summarize, problems, spasm, importance of the cocktail. Don't forcefully pull the catheter. Give time. Be patient. Radial loop, microcatheter technique, balloon tracking, J wire. If you know about it, you can go other side, you can go ulnar, high origin, most of the time it can be accomplished. It's just, you need a, a, a careful catheterization. Uh, perforation, compress, like, like you should not have a, a major issue uh, uh, if you just compress. Catheter unraveling, we stopped using infinity and now I actually took a step back. I, I actually I just prefer to use a six French sheet with a benchmark rather than going with a bigger catheter like the uh, Infinity or the Neuromax. In a way, it's a limitation in some cases, but that's the maybe at this point with the, the catheter we have available, I think this is the price to pay. Um, this was not too important, I just like to show that like, we can also compress with the tear band in the, in the, in the, um, in the ulnar, and then I wanted to show you a few, uh, a few cases of uh, intraoperative angiogram where radial can be very important. Okay, for intracranial pathology, actually, for us became standard to do a radial approach. You can really exchange the A line at the end of the clipping or AVM treatment or whatever surgery it is, uh, and then uh, go go radial. For the spinal case, it is a little limited because two two things: the catheter length, the, the length of the catheter going from the radial all the way spinal below can, is. Uh, it may be a limitation, but also the catheterization is much, much more difficult. Uh, I'll skip through this, but uh, I want to show you, for example, this case. This was a right, um, uh, it was a phylum terminale fistula supplied by a right T10 to the uh, uh, Adamkev is going all the way down. The fistula is here in the phylum. Um, so we, that was a transfemoral spinal angiogram. Now the patient goes for surgery, uh, because that's what we decided. And that's, uh, you see, like how we position the patient, we, um, and then we go radial. And here it was, it was relatively straightforward to go through the arm. We kept in this position. But uh, um, then going down and catheterize the right T10 vessel was actually not easy at all. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, at the end we accomplished it, and we showed that the fistula was, uh, was cured. Uh, here you see the catheter from, from above going to the right T10. Obviously now the patient is, uh, is uh, prone because of the surgery. That's the experience that we have with the uh, interoperative angiography for spinal thoracolumbar. Okay, so we did four cases. And as you see, the length of the angiogram is, is pretty significant because these are cha it, it's a challenging catheterization. So um, uh, since uh, Amir uh, showed uh, his slides, I want to invite you also to the, our banana course next year. Uh, we already have a date, 2 to 4 uh, November 2020. Thank you so much, everybody. I really uh, love this conference. Um, and I'm here for any questions. Thank you.